Hello. Uh, good afternoon, students. Welcome to Petroleum and Chemical Engineering channel. Uh, today's presentation, we are going to see about the uh, geophysics in petroleum exploration. Uh, it's a new topic in our channel. So, so far we have discussed on uh, uh, basically on drilling, reservoir, engineering and uh, some concepts on your petroleum production engineering, design of uh, casing, design, etc. And now, today's presentation we will see on geophysics in petroleum exploration. Let's go to the presentation. So, geophysics in petroleum exploration. So, here we are going to see the mechanical wave measurements, electromagnetic wave techniques, etc. So, geophysics uh, plays a key role in petroleum engineering. Uh, now, let's discuss and see the our presentation clearly on mechanical wave measurements and electromagnetic wave techniques. See what are the geophysical methods. So we have mechanical wave measurements, then uh, cross hole test CHTs, then down hole test DHT, then we have also the spectral analysis of surface waves, then seismic refraction, suspension logging. So this is your mechanical wave measurements and uh, Electromagnetic wave techniques, we have ground penetrating radars, GPRs, then EM, electromagnetic conductivity, then SR, surface resistivity and magnetometer service, that is MT. So these are the basic geophysical methods. Then what are the mechanical wave geophysics? So here we are seeing the borehole geophysics and non-invasive types which are conducted across the surface. So borehole geophysics uh, mainly utilized in the well logging techniques and also the measurement of wave dispersions, uh, velocity, frequency, amplitude, attention, etc. And uh, we are determining the layering, elastic properties, stiffness, damping and inclusions then different types of waves that is for basic wave types you know compression waves p wave s wave r waves and l waves love waves very compression wave shear waves then Raleigh's waves then and love waves so these are the four types of waves which you know very well then so what are the mechanical wave geophysics so how we are defining these waves, four types of waves. So this compression wave is a very is a fastest wave and is easy to generate. Then shear wave is a second fastest wave, uh, is uh, directional and polarized and most fundamental wave to be your geotechnical methods. Then uh, Raleigh R denoted by R and uh, it's a surface wave, it's very close to S wave velocity, 90 to 94 percentage. And you know the hybrid PS wave at ground surface boundary and L low wave interface boundary effect. So in the VSP, that is rectangle seismic profiling techniques, in your uh, seismic method also, you have learned some concept on S wave, P waves, etc. So these are utilized in the uh, measurement of your reservoir characterization and VSP profiling we learned. Now next slide. So this is your mechanical body waves. So you can see here the initial then you can see the next one is your P wave then direction propagation and S wave. So you can see the UX that is 
distance between the two points, then wavelength lambda, then ui, and again wavelength, then direction of propagation x, the x wave or refraction and contraction. So this is the mechanical body waves initiated by initially, then P wave, then S wave. So wavelength versus your uh, direction of propagation is denoted as X. Then next, uh, so this is your mechanical body waves. So amplitude versus time. So the source, then receiver geophone is there. So you can see the traveling of RSP. Then you see the receiver, then the oscilloscope, and you can see here the time versus SP and your S. So, this is the mechanical body wave sourcing the receiver geophones and your moments amplitude versus uh, time, and also shown here, and the source is shown with the receiver of geophones. So, this is your oscilloscope. So you can see the PSR is then now let's come to the compression that is mechanical wave compression wave velocity VP and P is the wave velocity. So you can see here the steel intact rocks, weathered rocks, ice, steel sand, clay, sea water, and fresh water. Compression wave velocity shown for 0 to 8000. Uh, P wave velocities, see, it differs for the different uh, materials. For steel, you can see 7000. Then you can see the intact rocks, it lies between 4200 to uh, 6800. So, like that, you can see the seawater, freshwater also, everything clay, sand. So all the things are very clearly shown here, the compression wave velocity, meter per second. Then S wave velocity. Similarly, shear wave velocity, Vs. Vp by Vs, this is Vs, that is meter per second. Same, that is S wave velocity for fresh water, sea water, clay, sand, ice, other rocks and intact rocks, and steel. Then next slide, this is your shear, mechanical wave shear shear wave velocity. So these are the geophysical equipments which are utilized. Seismograph, spectrum analyzer, then portable analyzer, then velocity recorder, etc. So seismic refraction. So you can see the oscilloscope, then see the source plate, then we see the geophones. So the oscilloscope records. You can see there the soil VP1, uh, the rock is VP2. So it started recording. Note VP1 is greater than, sorry, less than VP2. So T1, T2, T3, and T4. So determine the depth to rock layer, the VZR is shown here, X1, X2, X3. So this is the seismic refraction. <coughs> the oscilloscope you can see in the right hand side. Then this is your seismic refraction. See the horizontal soil layer over rock and you can see here the distance from the source. X is shown 15 meters. Then you can see the travel time in seconds and depth to rock is ZC 5.65 meters. So VP1 equal to 1350 meter seconds. Then VP2 is 4880 meter per second. So XC is equal to 115 meters. So distance from source meters 0 to 50 and your travel time in seconds. So this is a seismic refraction. Horizontal soil layer over rock. So is it C is equal to X C by 2 square root of VP2 minus VP1 VP1 when divided by VP2 plus VP1. So this is the formula T value X values are shown. So you can understand the seismic fraction. Then next is your shear wave velocity Vs. 
So it's a fundamental measurement in all solids, steel, concrete, wood, soil, rocks. The initial small strain stiffness is represented by the shear modulus. G0 equal to rho t is squared s, then G dynamic equal to G maximum equal to G naught. So that is your shear modulus then. So it applies to all static and dynamic problems at these small strains. So S is less than 10 power minus 6 and it's applicable to both undrained and drained loading cases in geotechnical engineering. This is your cross hole seismic testing equipments. Then this is the cross hole testing. Is carrying out the slope in kilometer. So PVC based borehole. Then you can see the slope in kilometer PVC cased borehole. So note the verticality of casing must be established by slope in kilometers to correct distances delta x with depth. So now you can see the cross hole testing has been conducted. See we are getting the in kilometers x equal to fctn function z then shear wave velocity equal to vs equal to delta x by delta t so you can see the velocity transducer that is you have the j phone is here also here and packer is there then downwell hammer source and pump source to the pvc cased borehole so this is your cross hole testing so you can see the oscilloscope left hand side delta t has been shown cross hole testing so all this measured using the inclinometers so down hole to seismic testing equipments next slide so again down hole testing see test depth interval form then horizontal plank with normal load, hammer through river, test the borehole. You can see the packers, then horizontal velocity transducers, geophone receivers, packers are you can see, and Z1, Z2. So you see that shear wave velocity V is equal to delta R by delta T. So R1 squared equal to Z1 square plus x squared then r2 squared equal to z2 squared plus x squared so horizontal plank with normal load next this is the shear wave velocity yes then inside to surface wave testing so signal analyzer you can see in the top inside to surface wave testing so we can see the Raleigh surface waves layer one layer two layer three and layer 4 and so sensors are shown and with accelerometers so you are recording in the surface wave testing so this is inside to surface wave testing has been carried out in this manner <coughs> so shear wave measurement so resonant column torsional shear bender element triaxial cells like is local strains specimens are shown here and undistributed tube or piston sample you can see here so that is for laboratory testing and inside to testing so two things are shown here so in the inside to testing you can see the impact source the cpt truck is there and the drilling sampling has been done and the pns wave suspension logging has been carried out so you can see the vs cross hole case to borehole and geophone is there so spect spectral analysis of surface waves SESW has been recorded so laboratory testing versus your inside to testing so this is your shear wave measurements in the laboratory use the resonant column torsional shear and bender elements so that is your laboratory testing and then the inserted testing you can see the schematic like this 
So PNS wave suspension logging has been carried out. So we are measuring the VS. Then, so you can see the down seismic cone or seismic dilatometer. See in the bottom, so there is a seismic cone or seismic dilatometer is there. And left hand side, you can see the sampling, pierced boroughs, uh, drilling and sampling has been done. Now, next is seismic piezo contest, SCPTU. Seismic piezo cone test. Piezo cone penetration test, SCPTU. So, as per ASTDM. So you can see the setup, horizontal GF1 in, in clinometer, then there is a uh, FS sleeve friction, then pore water pressure has been taken, then measured up tip stress or cold resistance QC, and uh, Q1 is the corrected tip stress equal to QC plus 1 minus AV in, multiplied by US, that is pore water pressure. So now we can see the cone rig with hydraulic push system on the right hand side. So we can see the cone rod 36 millimeter diameter. So arrival TX, then CPT readings taken at for every 10 to 50 millimeter CPT readings. So plank under truck load, then strike parallel to GF1 axis. You can see the arrows. Horizontally polarized, vertically propagating shear waves and pseudo interval velocity method. So, this is a seismic visocone penetration test. And in the left hand side, you can see the you can right hand side there is a cone rig with hydraulic push system for this uh, CPTU. Then you can see the left hand side the electric cone penetrometer. With 60 degree apex, the D diam D equal to 36 mm and D equal to 40 by 44 mm, 15 centimeters square. And uh, so, first one is saturation cone tip cavities and placement of pre saturated porous filter elements. First one, second is to obtain a baseline reading for the tip sleeve, then pour water transducers then in kilometer channels that is 0.1 and 2. so this is the seismic piezo cone test um, schematic and your uh, calculations are shown in in kilometer seismic piezo cone penetration test so you are getting the baseline readings for the tip so next so seismic physical test so we obtain four independent measurement with the depth that is hybrid of penetrometer with downhole geophysics so cone tip stress qt penetration pore pressure u then sleeve friction we can see as in fs and arrival time of downhole shear wave that is ts so these are the four independent measurements taken in the spt that is cone tip stress penetration of pore water pressure then sleep friction and arrival time of downhole shear ts so these are the things which you have seen in the previous slide so your qc fs so u2 and u1 so 60 degree next so you can see the vs So automated seismic source. So electronically actuated self-contained left and right polarization, then modified beam uses uh, fin to ens uh, ens enhance the shear wave generation and successfully tested to depths of 20 meter, capable of being used with traditional impulse hammers. Then downhole shear wave velocity. So you can see here the anchoring system, automated source, then polarized wave, then you can see the downhole VS with 
excellent soil coupling. So you can see the diagram animation. So very clearly, anchoring system, bottom midget source, and waller is waves, then down all waves with excellent soil coupling. So now complete set of shear wave drains, mud island right? This is the example. Now the geophone output for depth meters versus time seconds has been taken recorded. So this is a complete set of shear wave drain. You can see here. Next. So this is a sounding at QR FS U2 ES, then your D Q is your shown in the piezo contest in the red hand side. So the sounding has been recorded in this manner. Vs, Qt, then Fs, kilopascal, megapascal, then kilopascal. Vs is your meter per second. So depth is shown here in the left hand side. So D equal to 35.7 millimeter. So next. So this is seismic flat dilatometer SDMT. You can see here. Then seismic dilatometers recordings are shown here at the expansion pressures P1, then lift up pressure. P0 then travel time of shear wave meter per second. So depth is shown on the left hand side. Then geophysical method that is next is your electromagnetic wave techniques. So electromagnetic wave geophysics is a non destructive method and non invasive conducted across surface and measurements of electrical and magnetic properties of the ground resistivity conductivity that is and permittivity dielectric and magnetic fields so it covers the wide spectrum in the frequency ranges of 10 mega, uh, 10 hertz to 10 power 22 hertz <coughs> it is electromagnetic wave geophysics then electromagnetic wave geophysics we are seeing the following techniques so that is surface mapping techniques ground penetrating radars gpr Electrical resistivity ER service, then EM electromagnetic conductivity, then magnetometer service, and downhole techniques, resistivity props, MIPS, RCPTUs, then second and third tomography. <coughs> then GPR ground penetrating radar. So GPR surveys conducted on gridded areas and pair of transmitting and receiver antennas, short of impulses of high frequency EM waves and reflective sorry relative changes in the directive properties that this reflects differences in the subsurface then depth of exploration in soil dependent up to 30 mm in dry sands and uh, 3 mm in wet saturated place that is for gpr so this is your gpr sensors then geo radars you can see here in the picture Then the, these are the illustrated results from GPS crossing and underground utility corridor. You can see the two way travel time positioning and also the depth the right hand side. Then these are the illustrated results from GPR ground penetrating radars. So you can see the gas, water in blue, then two wave travel time, etc. Then geostratigraphy of river plus stratigraphy, water table. These are some of the illustrative results. Tables of GPR, useful in locating the underground utilities. You can see the drainage pipes. Underground storage tanks, you can see using a GPR. 
the approximate depth also then electric resistivity measurements these resistivity systems so er surveys so resistivity ohm meter is an electrical property it is the reciprocal of conductivity then arrays of electrodes used to measure the changes in the potential and evaluate the changes in soil types and variation in pore fluids so used to map faults cause features caves sinkholes stratigraphy and contaminant plumes so this is the electricity electrical resistivity measurements you can see the arrays row a then number z array then vener arrays the formula is shown here row uh, sigma I equal to pi s squared minus s squared divided by a delta v by i then vener array uh, sigma equal to 2 pi a delta v by i so you can see the all the values different points a m and b so s m n e etc so it is a electrical resistivity measurements schomburger array and vener arrays so what do you can gain by changing the electrode spacing so you can say that the depth of vr survey so there will be greater spacing influences when you go for deeper you can see the electrical resistivity measurements so the results are shown here white in rocks entrance in the caves and existing sinkholes etc potential bedrock fractures also shown here electrical resistivity measurements so this is also electrical resistivity measurements so bulk resistivity sigma uh, is ohm meters glacial sands gravels clay loam then weather for rocks so 1 to 10000 that is your ohm meters so this is the conductivity results sample log surface gravel clay is a silky case then etc so upper force aquifer also and lower aquifers also shown at different depths then next so electromagnetic conductivity em so showing the underground storage tanks when magnetometer surveys ms so measure the relative changes in the earth's magnetic fields across the sites so the magnetic survey also helps to locate the abundant oil wells so we can see in the right hand side the abundant oil wells you can see the magnetic survey helps to locate the abundant oil wells so magnetometer surveys then apply bit of inside to test the grain size then inside method etc clay silts sands gravels and others pst pmt dmt and cpt and spt so geophysics all the geophysical measurements so in test in side to testing objectives so selecting the in side to test for augmenting supplementing and even replacing the borings and realizing the applicability of various in situ methods to different soil conditions then we are recognizing the complementary of nature of in situ direct push methods with conventional water drilling and sampling methods that is the objective of in situ testing and uh, recognize the values of utilizing these methods and quality implications for their usage so thank you so we have completed our presentation so we have completed our presentation today on uh, 
geophysics in petroleum exploration. Uh, we will see more on the geoscience and geophysics uh, in our next uh, presentation. Thank you. Subscribe my channel.